Here we go, Wii Knives. Yes, we have the Wii Blokow in the house. See? B-L-O for blow and C-A-O for cow, like cacao or whatever. It's a Spanish word. Spanish word. The designer lives in the Madrid, Spain area, and I'll show you a brief bio on him in a little bit. This one's got the black titanium handle as opposed to the silver titanium. You can get this in silver. And then this is carbon fiber here. And then it's an S35VN blade and it's stonewash. And baby, is that a stonewash? That's, I mean, I was like, at first, is that black wash? It's not, but it is. Miguel Barbuda, um, I'll, I'll, I'll show you. I mean, he's got an Instagram uh, site as well, and I'll get into that. You got a lanyard hole, titanium pocket clip, okay? All this very nice, and it locks up right here. So it's a lock back. They call it a window lock. This thing locks into this little window here. So that's why they call it the window lock. Here's the release. So it's a big, big, big knife. Now, if you want to release it normally, like any lock back, there you go. Now, it swings around. Obviously, it's not hitting all the way. You see what I'm saying? Goes down here. Stops. Here... I can see that this is coming up, touching the back of this window and how it lifts it, it kicks underneath. Now this is what holds it in place instead, as opposed to a detent, whatever. So there, now you're in place, okay? If you want to release the knife, you can do the thumb stud one way or the other, but this thumb stud, you can walk it around kick it into place if you want to release it one-handed you can do that here's the thing it's on bearing so just let it come out of that little window lock get your fingers out of the way and let it roll around then kick it closed so you can do it both ways if you want one-handed you can do that now can you actually flick this out Oh, yeah, you can flick it, but it bounces off the stop here. So unless you flicked it hard enough to lock it in, it's bouncing back. And hopefully your fingers are not here because when it bounces back, it's going to come in contact with your fingers. So this is one of those things you can't be real cavalier with. I mean, oh, can I take my finger and flick it? Yeah. But see how it bounced? If that was in this lower position here, it would have bounced right back on my finger. So, I mean, if you had enough force, I guess, or you can start it out by uh, maybe pushing it out with your finger and finish it like that. Okay, you know, so you can figure that out. It's just keep your fingers out of the way because this is on bearings at some point in time. If you see and you just let it roll back like that and your fingers are here, it's not going to be a good thing. So just warning, warning, warning. Uh, yes, it's a big, big knife. It's a four and a quarter inch blade of S35VN, as I said, which is like 107 millimeters. And overall... Nine and a quarter, which is uh, 23 and a half centimeters. It's big. It's big. It's big and bad. 15 millimeter thick. 0.58, not six tenths. I thought it'd be more like six, but uh, 0.15, so mm, close to four millimeter blade stock. 3.8. So, yeah, uh, interesting blade design. And if you look at uh, Miguel's uh, custom knives, you'll see that he does this a lot. Okay, so more of a Spanish 
uh, tradition type design. And like I said, you got your lanyard hole over here. So it's a pretty good size knife and it's not ultra light. Uh, but six and a half ounces, I've seen much heavier on a knife this size. And there's six and a half ounces, 184, almost 185 grams. Okay. Opens. Uh, the Ergos, to me, are really, really good. Look at this. This, um, this is, this fits my hand perfectly. Which means that somebody's hand is not going to fit perfectly right here here and then these other two in here even if you ha your hand was a little bit bigger than mine but if it's bunches bigger then maybe one of your fingers will be hitting these humps that's the that's the downside of that as opposed to if you just had a knife where there's no individual choils. Then, you know, every everybody on board here can kind of find their their own position without much of an issue. But when you do this, then you're kind of defining where you're putting your fingers. You got a choil up front here. And let me see if I can find a piece of paper to cut. Come here. Oh, crap. I about cut into my board. Wow. Okay, that's sharp. Yeah, that's really sharp. This one's really sharp. Wow. Yeah, it is. Okay. Okay. I got it. I got it. Ooh. That's all of that. Oh, let me show you also. Well, they were having this thing recently, so I got this uh, with it. Uh, which I was going, oh, that's cool. So the Civivi Wii tag thing, and then you get this little multi-tool, which is bottle opener, and pry bar, and do your oxygen tank over here, and adjust the oxygen level. When, you know, when you're, like a normal day, when you're climbing Mount Rainier, or Mount Everest, you might need a little extra. Never mind. So here you go. And so that that's kind of nice. I mean, that's that's cool. I'm I'm happy with that. Now, measure it against something of some size. And really, I got my paladin out here again, which ain't gonna make it. And oh here. Well, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's try this. This is the Hyperion from Artisan. It's a big knife. It's a big, big knife. And it's there. It's there. Uh, with the blow cow. And it doesn't blow my cow away, but the Hyperion is big. Blow cow. Just, I have to remember things. I have to do weird mental things. To, I mean, all these names that are coming out. I know this is a Spanish word for blockhouse and all that. But still, I ain't Spanish. And I did lousy in Spanish class, too. So there you go. Okay. So, yeah, that's... But this big, big knife. Shredder. Come on, let's do the shredder. Let's waste a lot of your time. You're sitting there drumming your fingers like, what the hell? Come on, man. There you go. There's a shredder from Civivi. Hey, we're in the family, right? Yeah, and I got one of these one about the Civivi, too. One of those little... Hey, I got a couple of those chains. That's kind of cool. I'm, I'm glad. You know, I'm always looking for a damn bottle opener for some reason. You'd think I'd have a hundred of them, but... Okay. So, and hey, one more. Because I got to show off the Shodan by... Ooh, by Best Tech and that. That's smaller. This is 8.6 overall. Man. Nice knife, too. Nice. We're going to take this apart, by the way. I say nine minutes into my review. But, yeah, we're going to take it apart and take a look at it uh, for what that's worth. Which, probably not a whole lot to look at. On the designer, sorry, I waited so long into the review. But uh, he likes horses, and he's a man of the forge. 
and all kinds of things, but uh, Knife Maker Now, and I guess Goody Van Poppel and Bag Knives and Terzuel and those kind of guys influenced him. And of course, I cut the price off here, but $267 approximately for this knife. It's an S35VN, so they ain't giving them away. But at $267, if you get a 10% discount, LTK discount on White Mountain Knives, LTK is the discount code. So $26 bucks off, so you're getting in the, what, $240 range, etc. with free shipping. Here's the thing about this bloqueo. Uh, it's this lock mechanism. You know what? When I first got this knife, it reminded me of something because it's this piece of metal with this opening and this rolls around a little bit like the Chris Reeve tie lock remember that and they i guess they discontinued it but and i wasn't attracted to the look of that lock at all but you know i did a review on another knife that also has the uh grant and gavin hawk design which is the marksman but it was the gray ghost you know and and of course that had different uh, type of blade steel but it was a variation of the buck marksman and you see how you've got this piece of metal with an opening and then the blade's got a cutaway it comes back and clicks into place like that this is from my review of the gray ghost see how that kicks into place kind of the same right and here's your strip of steel and here's your strip of steel what i didn't like about the gray ghost is you built this whole structure of this of you know kind of an independent structure of steel along the top and it was just not integrated into the design of the knife i did not like it i couldn't get rid of the gray ghost i mean the overall design of the knife i love uh of this marksman design but if they would have intake integrated it like they integrated this into this knife okay fine it, a winner absolutely but they didn't uh so that was my issue with that and then again the chris reeve tie lock no no it was just too much of a structure down the blade and all that stuff it's like no 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 uh but this is seamless seamlessly integrated into the design and look at the design flows right in here this flows into the bolster really good lines on this knife pocket clip does not take over the design obviously you have contoured carbon fiber and titanium on this knife fit and finish is great and of course we knives is wonderful uh let me kick over to the part of the box I opened here and of course you get a pouch with the box and in it you know they're throwing these stickers both for like the Civivi and the Wii okay here's your Civivi here's your Wii sticker and then of course you get a microfiber cloth your little card and all that kind of stuff so it doesn't say anything specific about the bloqueo in here but there you go see what i'm saying it's big if you like big knives and you kind of like the fact that this is a lock back um and you know piercing slicing and check this out i mean the tip's not a fainting flower either because see this you've got kind of a reinforcement coming up here but it, it's very tactical looking, I think. Check it out again. I think I've shown you some spine shots. Lord Almighty, before I crank this thing apart. I think Wii Knives has come out with so many different models that they have the, the artistic uh, liberty uh, to be able to go ahead and do some 
other interesting and unusual things. I thought the miscreant was really good, kind of a Barnley design, nine inches long and put 2.8 ounces. Uh, but just a lot of things that they do that look kind of like they're stepping out and getting very creative. And you know what? They're, that's not a bad thing. So this may not be your cup of tea, um, but I like it. Actually, I like it, and I'd carry this. I'd be happy to. Ugly rag time. Here we go. Time to get out the ugly rag and get this baby tore apart. One really good thing, of course, it's all number eights. So here we go. Let's see what we got. I have not even adjusted this pivot. I have not put a wrench to this thing yet. So let's see how this thing comes apart, because it could be... You know, always could have surprises. So far, so good. And let's pull this out. I think I'm going to take that pocket clip off regardless. Okay, let's put these, I'm going to set these aside, but yeah, looks like there was a little. And you can tell one's longer than the other, which means one actually went into that backspacer there, uh, back to back with that screw, but the other one just probably went into the liner. So keep, you know, just keep track of that and know that. Don't get your screws screwed up oh there is no screw there lord well i better clean my glasses i'm old but old men rule right guys all you older guys out there you know that okay so we're leaving the screws right in there turned upside down there we go carbon fiber all day long yes there's some thread paster in there paster baster and what do we do now? Let's just see if we can take this little darling apart because this is all this titanium underneath is all connected. It's all one piece with this. So this ought to be a blast and a half to get off. So we're going to gently, because we know we've got, you know, we've got a tight fit along this spine here. So we're going to just gently put the towel in here and, you know, just pop it up without hopefully scratching it. Let's see how good I did. Huh? No scratch marks. Okay, good. So we took this out. Here's our little pin right here. And we have ceramic bearings. And we've got all kinds of stuff, but let's pull this off here. Bearings here, bearings here. It's not milled in the blade area. The bearing area is here and created in the liner. So steel washer ceramic bearings so it'd be like most any knife of this kind of a uh, construction but here's this obviously so there's your your lock which isn't complicated okay uh, it's all parted out Keep these little screws in here. No big deal if they fall out because they're the only ones that are the body screws, period, that we've taken out because we didn't do anything from this side, which I'm good at doing nothing. And so nothing is exactly what I'm going to do from this side. No point. No point. So here we go. And how do we put it back together? One piece at a time.
Okay. Throw that bird dog of a blade on here. Oh, where's my little pin? Where'd I throw you at? Oh, you're in this side. Okay, well, I guess I'll bury you right in there when I do that. Okay. Throw this one up at you. And this kind of just leaks out, so that's good enough. Enough. Enough is enough. And I got the pin here, so I know it goes, you know, right there is where it matches up. So I think that's all, folks. Uh, so, wow, okay. Okay. Okay, yeah, ooh, baby. Okay, we're all kind of particular about how we want to fit back on there. That is tight. Okay. May I proceed? Whew. Okay. Got it done, but it definitely wanted a certain way of all those things to just line up and get together. I get it. Okay. All right. Let's put our little collar on and our pivot screw back on. And we can put our pocket clip back together. Okay. Long screw, short screw. Right in that little milled out area. There we go, finally sat down in there. You're next, buddy. Okay. Much longer travel. There you go. But we've got her clank back together. Let's see where we are. And let's see what kind of. Okay, we're good here. We got no play. All right, we got the blow KO back together. And it's a big, tough guy. Um, uh, I like it. It fits great in my hands. And of course, you know, if you watched a lot of my reviews that I like a large knife, uh, and not exclusively, but I don't mind them. And six and a half ounces is not too heavy for me to carry. So yeah. Uh, and I do like the design. I think the design is attractive. Uh, Tactical? Yeah. Interesting? Yeah. Uh, easy to operate? Yeah. Still a one-hander with a good lock? Yeah. I'm going to let you go. Thanks. Appreciate you hanging out with me. And you know what we do. We love them knives. So you guys stay sharp.